I've made y'all wait. Ever since the 1st of March, back when this deck first came out, I was trying to roll for it, I was trying to pull it, but things just wouldn't come my way. They just wouldn't come to me, and I couldn't finish it. But finally, thanks to the rental system, we're able to deliver Shadow Paladin. Look at this. Look at how much I'm missing. Four PBOs, four Masquerades, three Nemains. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So today, we are going to be covering Shadow Paladin. This is going to be releasing next month in English. And there are some big buffs that this deck has gotten in uh, Zero. And so you really want to watch this to see what the buffs are, because these buffs are the reason why this deck can be Tier 1. It, like, when this game, when this deck comes out, it's going to be Tier 1. Japan puts to Tier 2 later on, I still think it's Tier 1 in my personal opinion, but, I mean, everybody has different opinions in this game and that's normal, you know, that's what makes a community. So, we're going to be looking at the deck list, looking at what the deck plays and what these buffs are. So, of course, our starter is Mr. Fullbow. So, Fullbow skill is almost the same as the original one. When you ride Blaster Javelin over him, you search your deck for Blaster Dark. So, same stuff as usual. And then in the Soul, that's the new effect, when you ride Phantom Blaster Dragon, then you may call him out of your soul to a rearguard circle. So, you get a free rearguard to pop for Phantom Blaster Dragon's effect or Phantom Blaster Overlords. And that's a tip on what's coming. So, then, of course, we have Blaster Javelin. So, when you have Full Battle in the Soul, he gets a permanent plus 2k, so he's 8k on the Vanguard Circle. And then Rearguard Circle, of course, when you place him, you may discard a Grade 3 to search your deck for a Phantom Blaster Dragon and put it to your hand, so that way you can secure your Grade 3 ride. So, of course, that is also optimal to have. Then, uh, we are running some Charons, because Charon is going to let us hit, hit for nice numbers, especially with our Cross Ride, so we're going to be making 21k Columns, and that's really good. And then, finally... My tech that I like back in the day is Nightmare Painter. When placed Vanguard in Rearguard Circle, you may put a card from your hand into your soul. So this way you can put the Phantom Blaster Dragon into your soul and then ride the Phantom Blaster Overlord without having to actually, you know, go through the motions each turn and getting to your crossfire turn a bit faster. So this was a really common play back in the day because, I mean, back then, uh, Phantom Blaster Dragon and Phantom Blaster Overlord were both pretty bad, but at least you could sit on a 13k base and then gather resources with like Maka and Nemain and stuff like that pretty easily. So it was good for that reason, but I think the card is still good right now. I would still play play it simply for that fact that you can kind of skip the cross ride uh, and get ahead of the curve. So then of course, Blaster Dark, when you have a Blaster Javelin in your soul, permanent plus 1k, so it's going to be 10k on your Vanguard Circle, and then Vanguard Circle when placed, you may count on us 2 and retire one of your opponent's rearguards. Now, this effect doesn't really get used that much, um, simply because, I mean, your counter blast is really scarce, you don't really have counter, blast, uh, counter chargers in this clan yet. Um, or you do, you have Curse Lancer, but it's like, you know, it's like a one at a time on hit. Man, I nearly fumbled up, imagine if I said it doesn't have counter chargers, and then looked at the counter charger of the next card. But, yeah, so like this effect, you only really use this against matchups like, um, Majesty Lord Blaster, where you want to, like, kind of must two to, like, pop their Wingle Brave, or, like, if they give you the damage, or if, like, some Kagero player, like, goes second and, like, crits you, and then you just kill their Conro, you know, so, like, pesky starters like that. You can get rid of them. You can get rid of them uh, just so your opponent doesn't give you a hard time because sinking in that two count box will actually be a bigger payoff than letting your opponent keep that. So this is the only way to snipe those starters in Shadows. And we only play two because it doesn't do anything else outside of being on the Vanguard Circle. It's literally a dead card otherwise. And so you can search it with a Blaster Javelin. You can put it into your soul with the Nightmare Painter if you need to. But otherwise, it's just a vanilla. It doesn't really do that much. Then, of course, Curse Lancer. When its attack hits a Vanguard, you may counter charge one. So this is your only counter boss refunding. This SP is one of the best looking SPs in the game, in my opinion. It looks insanely good. But so it's a good card. Uh, you want to run like three of it. Most counter chargers are running like three or four in general in a lot of these clans. So it's pretty good, but it has to hit Vanguard. So, of course, on Rearguard, when it hits Rearguard, it doesn't really do anything. Then, Nemain puts in so much work. She got a little buff, she's 5k power now instead of being 3k, so that's also pretty good. And of course her rearguard circle skill is the same as it used to be, on place, Calamus 1, discard 1 card, and draw 2. So it's really good, it's literally just drop 1, draw 2, it's a plus 1, and she's an intercept. Together with Charon, this makes 13k columns, meaning they can still hit things for relevant numbers. With any booster, she hits for 11k, or 10k if it's with a full bow, so it can still counter the rear guards at least. And then she's still an intercept that your opponent has to take out, so they have no choice, they can't ignore it, they gotta take her out. And so, but she's always gonna be gathering your resources. She gives you extra cards, her skill is one of the best in the game. Like, a skill like this, for new players, might be kind of like, oh, I mean, it's just extra cards, but extra cards is how you win. That's just how Vanguard is. So, in the main, 
absolute four of. Oh, also for reference, this list is um, is a, is referenced from one of the winners of the Vanguard Zero Championship qualifiers. So he actually won with this exact shadow list. So we're using it as our drive. So. Final Lesser Dragon. So this is what the regular art looks like from the Gacha, and this is in V Metals. So you can get Final Lesser Dragon from V Metals. So for 200 V Metals, you can exchange for this alternate art, Final Lesser Dragon. I would say that the one that you get from the Gacha does look a bit better, though. Of course, this is the SP art from back in the day. But so, what does Final Lesser Dragon do? Oh, actually, we missed a grade too. Masquerade. Masquerade is uh, during your turn, if you have a Blaster Vanguard, he has plus 3k, so he's a 12k attacker. Very important for hitting good numbers with any of your boosters. Hits at 18k or 17k with the full bow, but it's relevant. It hits against cross rides. It's good. So, Final Master Dragon. If you have a Blaster Dark in your soul, he has plus 1k permanently, so he's an 11k Vanguard. And then, here comes one of the, the second buff, which is kind of us 2 and retire 3 of your own rear guards. Then, you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it, and this unit gains plus 10k, plus 1 crit for that turn. So, that opponent rear guard retire effect was not there before, and so they gave him a buff. It's a nice buff, because this way you can take out your opponent's intercept, and then you can like basically swing at them face first, and then swing with the crit first, second, and then you get yourself, you know, either you get their PG out, or you get them to high amounts of damage, or you win that turn, so it's pretty versatile. That extra retire makes it much nicer, because this way it's not just like a sack three for just power and crit just to run into a PG, you actually get to retire one of your opponent's rear guards in exchange as well. So, the effect is pretty nice. You might use it once per game at most probably otherwise it's a bit too big of a minus because i mean you're making advantage from like your blaster javelin from your nemain you know from i mean yeah, actually that's basically it there's one more card we'll take a look at it in a second but so it helps a little bit but you don't want to use it too much because that way you'll fall, start falling behind and you won't have the pieces you usually want to retire stuff like your full bow and like your grade ones like javelin that you don't use because you want to keep those grade twos for intercept of course but you can kind of adapt every game to what you want to do then Phantom Blaster Overlord. So this is the cross ride for PBD. And so of course he has cross ride skill, Phantom Blaster Dragon. So when you have Phantom Blaster Dragon in his soul, he's a 13k permanently throughout the game. So that's of course very hot. Your opponent has to commit boosters and stuff to hit you. It's great. Then this card has been buffed out the wazoo. It's absolutely insane. So when he attacks Vanguard, Persona Blast, which means discard a copy of the same card. So you discard another Phantom Blaster Overlord and he gets plus 10k and a crit for that turn. Some of you may remember, if you played back in the day, that this effect used to cost Counter Blast 3. 3 for 10k and a crit. And now, no 3, free. It doesn't cost anything. You just drop a card, get 10k and a crit. That is amazing. Absolutely insane. It's so good that they made this free. This actually makes the card entirely great, but they didn't stop there. They didn't stop at making it free. They gave him another skill, which is Catalyst 2 and retire one of your own rearguards to retire one of your opponent's rearguards. This is, again, amazing. Catalyst 2 for a 1 for 1? That's insane. That is so much better than what Phantom Blaster Dragon offers you. He offers you Catalyst 2, pop 3 of your own to pop one of your opponents, but then get the power. Whereas this is basically you Catalyst 2, pop one of your own, pop one of your opponents, and then you discard one for the extra crit and the 10k. So, really, really good. You can pop your intercepts of your opponent, it's not once per turn either, so if your opponent gives you 4 damage randomly, you can just pop both of their front rows and just go face with the crit, and it's pretty great. It's pretty great. But of course it doesn't stop there. We have the advantage engine, that is the uh, bad bar car. So, back on a guard circle when placed, you look at the top card of your deck and you may call it. So basically this gives you random free pluses, so this is the other way that like you can call these, call a bunch of stuff off the bad bar car, and then retire it, whether it's for the PBO effect or the PBD effect. So we will abbreviate them just to make it faster. And then the last card we play is the Dark Dictator. He's only a rare, so this is good for budget shadows, but basically this unit cannot be boosted on Vanguard Circle, and then Vanguard Circle during your turn, for each of your rearguards he gets plus 2k power, just like Alfred, so he's, he can go up to a maximum of 20k. But then the main reason why we play him is that third skill, which is Vanguard and Rearguard Circle effect, Soul Blast 3, and then for that turn, 3 of your front row units, oh no, 2 of your front row rearguards, sorry, get plus 5k. So, why this is good is basically just that you can deliver the finishing turn a bit easier. You usually have to give up your cross ride for it, but you can build numbers on your board that can hit over defensives, and so if you're going for that win on the turn, uh, the Dark Dictator can actually put in some good work on that front. So, we're going to take a look at this deck. This is, I mean, I think the most hyped up clan in the history of the game. Like, everybody loves Shadows. You know, whether it's, I've got to pay a big price for it, 10k of my crafting currency to rent it, it's a big price, but 
The deck is, of course, very, very good. You see Spectral Duke here because I'm using this skin for Ren, so don't get scared. Uh, it's not. This, we're not playing Spectral Duke. We're gonna do that some other time, or we've already done it, depending on how I'm uploading this. We're playing against Tong. So, we're gonna be going second here. This is gonna be pretty fun, but yeah, Shadows are really strong. Shadows are one of the most popular decks in the game. And it looks like we have a pretty good opening. That's actually an amazing opening. We can go Javelin, Search Blaster Dark, and then we can ride this, or we can fish for a Phantom Blaster Dragon with this, and then we got Karen for the boost. Maybe the Karen could go back. I'm not sure if I want that. But maybe I'll want to keep it, actually. So I can make a 13k column with the main. I think I'll keep it. This hand is actually really good. This hand is actually really good. And we're going second, so I have another chance to draw something. Wingle Brave as well, so that means that if he gives us that extra damage, we can actually punish him. Now, playing against Royals, I always say this, you know, you don't want to give them that first counter mask, you know, because they might just... Because um, then they get to use their... Um, Wingle Brave immediately. So you want to be careful about that. So here, of course, our opponent's going to be thinking about which grade one to ride. He's going to choose the K. Maybe he was debating, you know, probably didn't have the uh, Lian to do the filtering. Or maybe he does, we'll find out in a second. Let's see. Sometimes you want to just call her and use her several times. Oh no. He's going to search the Blaster Blade so we know that is a confirmed card in his hand. But that's alright. So, we draw to Curse Lancer and a Bad Bar card. That's pretty good as well. So let's just go into the Javelin. And search ourselves the Blaster Dark here. That's pretty good. Alright, so now, I don't want to attack him just yet, because I don't want him searching MLB this turn. So I'm going to just pass here. This first damage is not going to change too much, and I think I can get away without doing it. So what we're going to do here is, I mean, now it's kind of the question like, oh, do I want to actually use the main? Depending on how much damage he gives me. If he gives me only the one damage, of course I'm going to use the main. If he gives me two, though, that Wingle Brave is not living. That Wingle Brave is not living, and if he doesn't have MLB in hand... Ooh, right, it's the Galatin. I don't think he's giving me another damage. I think he's just gonna go swing. Yeah, he's gonna go swing. He knows. He knows. Alright. Ooh, MLB though. That kinda tells me that he might actually have the MLB already set up in hand. So I, I can... At least now he gives me Karabas that I can fish with in the main. So that's pretty good. I'll happily take that. So that's A-OK -okay on my side. So, let's see. So I can't use Cur Curse Lancer this turn because he did ride this Galatin. I'd have to commit a booster behind it. Maybe I'll join it with the Nemain. We're gonna see what this Nemain gives me, actually. So I might be able to refund her cost uh, right off the bat, which is also pretty good. So let's see. We draw into PG. That's a good thing to have. Let's ride the Blaster Dark. You can see the animation here. The most... the edgiest card ever created. Arguably. Everyone loves it. Alright, Nemain. Gonna get to use her skill to discard one and draw ourselves two cards. So we're gonna discard the Bad Bar car. He puts in work, but not right now. Not right now. All right, let's see. Another Nemain and the PBD. That works out really well for me. Now I'm thinking, because basically, I can either just put down this here. Ah, but no, that doesn't make sense because it doesn't hit. So Nemain, I'm gonna give up on the Nemain. She's not gonna hit. I think what I'm gonna do is call this down. If my opponent doesn't get a defensive, I can counter charge at least. So I think that works out pretty well. Let's give him that damage. All right. Javelin, so now if he gets the trigger, it might... Oh, no, he got it. Ah, that's not too good. I really wanted this Lancer to counter charge, but that's okay. We'll just pass. We have double intercept set up. Of course, he can... Like, if he gives me no counter boss, I won't be able to use this, but it's okay. Like, I'll use the one counter boss on the domain here. But, let's see. He rides the Garmore. That's pretty interesting. So he doesn't... He's basically not using this Wingle Brave for the rest of the game. Unless he rewrites into MLB manually. So that means... He's gonna just be just setting up. Ooh, discards a heal to search a snow goal. That's pretty interesting. So this is the MLB MLB Garmor variant that I've spoken about in previous videos. It's pretty good though. It is pretty strong. All right, he's gonna use the Grade Two Garmor as well to search himself that sweet snow goal. None of them are intercepting though, but of course it's unnecessary just yet. All right, he's going into battles. So he's gonna go swing into the main and swing into my Lancer, and then swing in my face with the Garmor. But at least in terms of damage, I'm doing pretty okay. And then what I can do is basically promote this to hit against this. And then I can do a Nemain and full bow column to hit against this, and I can still go face. So we'll see. But I don't need to like get too anxious about anything just yet. All will come in time. It's gonna be alright. Okay, so. Stand and draw. Ooh, bad bar car. It's pretty good. Let's ride the Phantom Monster Dragon here. I'm gonna go for that slow cross ride. Alright. 
There he is. That's a little damage charging lance dance. I'm gonna put this here, I think. And now I think I'm just gonna go and gamble with this bad bar car. See what it gives me. Let's see what it gives me. Ooh, a blaster dark. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I can wait on the domain for a turn, actually. My hand is pretty okay. I can wait on the domain for a turn. So let's just get swinging and take out some of these rears. So this way, next turn, I can basically just get into the cross ride, and then depending on how much counter blast my opponent gives me, I'm in a pretty good position. So let's just take this slow. Don't have to rush it. Just see what we get. We get a heal as well. It's really good. So that basically gives us that counter charge eventually. So let's just give it to Vanguard here. So Bad Bar put in some work. I love the visual effect that PBD has when he hits. It's like the sword just like, just like go at the opponent. It looks really, really good. So you like to see it. They really put a lot of work into the visuals for Shadows. I definitely like it a lot. So also for those of you that are wondering how do you get this skin for Ren, the Asia Circuit one, this will release uh, upon the release of the uh, look here set. So that's when that comes out. All right, he didn't get the MLB. Ooh, so he's just going for like a slow, slow pace here. It's a blaster blade at the bottom and a K, so no triggers there. So you can give me the second damage, maybe third one even. That'd be pretty good because then I can do... Oh, he is giving it to me. I can do PBO. I got a draw as well. I can do PBO into the main, which is pretty hot. That is definitely pretty hot. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Ooh, Dark Dictator as well. That'll be my discard target, I think. So let's ride the Phantom Master Overlord. Get another visual effect. There we go. A little quick camera pan and a scream. My man do be roaring. All right, so... What we're going to do here is, I'm going to call down this Maka, discarding this Dark Dictator. So, Kamas 1 and pop. See what we draw into it. PG, another Nemain for next turn. That's pretty good. I like that. So now, why would I use... You know, I got to think about this. Why am I? Why would I use Nemain here? Or why would I use this here? Because actually, even if I use it, I have to sack something like this, and then call this here to still hit. So I'm better off just swinging here and keeping this counter blast for a later turn. And then I can, you know, if anything I could maybe uh, retire this, but I kind of want to keep the retire effect for later. So then what we're going to do is just swing with the main at the blaster blade, swing with this and then swing with this. I think I like that kind of turn it more. I can also do like this and then with put the put this behind Vanguard, hit, hit for 21. And that way we're actually hitting for a magic number. So I might just do that. I think I might just do that. It's pretty good. Pretty good turn of events, that way if he does get a defensive there, which I think it's pretty likely that he does. Well, he's been through seven triggers, about half. A bit more than half, but just in case, you never know. Alright, doesn't get one, so that's okay. But we're in cross right numbers now, so he's gonna have to struggle a little bit to get through. We got a draw trigger, that's also good. Let's make him sweat a little bit and put power on rearguard in case he thinks that we run stands. Of course, shadow players don't really run stands, so it'd be pretty weird. He gets a draw and another MLB goes down the drain though. So that's pretty good, you like to see it. So we've seen three draws. Ooh, interesting point is that he has heal on his Gancelot and his Alfred early. Which tells me he doesn't have four Gancelots. Which is pretty good. Which is pretty good. You like to see that. Alright, so he's going back to his turn. Looks like he's sticking to that Snowgull plan. He could. Uh, he doesn't... Yeah, this is only on place that he can search the Snowgull, so he's not going to go for it. But he's going to put down that Intercept. Let's see, if he gives me two damage here, actually, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't complain. But let's see, he needs a trigger. Ooh, that's a PG that goes away as well. That's the first one we've seen so far. Gonna give me another damage. And here he's gonna probably swing at my Babar car, just like that. That's alright, I can now use the Nemain again. You know, just showing you the power of Nemain, really. Look how much power... Like, look how much you draw through. And we get that Persona Blast. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Alright, we're gonna right skip. I'm gonna use the main once again. Discarding that Nightmare Painter, it's not doing anything for us right now. Let's draw a couple cards. Maybe a grid 2, a Masquerade would be pretty good to see as well. Ooh, Babble Card. Ooh, Curse Lancer, that's good. Curse Lancer is good. This way, I actually want to do the retire now. Uh, cause I get to... Uh, hold on. Hold on. Not yet, let me think about this. Cause basically, I could retire... This, and then swing for the crit, just to get the PG out of his hand. I think I'll do that. I lose a little bit of consistency because that's my last Karen, I think. Yeah, that's my last Karen, so I won't be able to redo that. And I don't have any great ones left in deck, so I'm not sure if it's worth it. I'm not sure if it's worth it there. Hmm. It's just that that way I can get the counter charge off this Curse Lancer, that makes it kind of worth it. I think I'm, I'm gonna go for it. 
and just retire this here. All right. So let's pop his uh, Galahad here. Galatin, rather. Galahad is the right chain. All right. So it took my time to think about it, but we're good to go now. So let's just get swinging. Still have a good... I don't have any more heals left, and I still have three draws left, so that's pretty good. But we're going to try to swing for lethal first. Use the effect to discard Persona Blast, and of course, gain that 10k and a crit. Test to see if he has a PG in hand. If not, that's okay. I'll put him to 5, I don't have any more heals left. I get a grade 2, which is also good. And another draw. Hey, I like that. Oh, and another Persona Blast for next turn. The power of that 0 counter blast Persona Blast is going to be pretty hot. And now basically I'm going to get to hit, and I get to counter charge 1, and if he gives me one more damage, I'm basically in a position where I can take it. And then next turn I'm going to have two counter blasts once again to use PBO's effect to retire something. So that's definitely really good. And then I'm pretty sure my both my front rows should be dying after this. Of course, once again mentioning that those cat paws mean that it's a rental card. So it's a card that I don't actually own, but I have to rent. Ooh, he gets the MLB. But does he actually have... He has one... Oh, hold on. Maybe he still has... I think he still has blasters. I think he still has blasters in his hand. He's going to try to kill me here. My man is hungry for the win, but that's also a little bit tricky because now he's going to be able to swing here, swing there. Ooh, okay. Looks like he doesn't have the Blaster Blade. I think he actually went through all his Blaster Blades. Let's see. One. Only one here. None here. I think he, he didn't even ride one. My man should have one, but here he's going to hit. Unless he crits, of course, then he won't. Okay, another PG goes down to the bottom. So now we know that there is basically just... Man, look at my deck. Six cards left. Six cards left, no triggers among them, but still PG and the Cursed Lancer. That's pretty good. Aw, oh, speak of the devil, Cursed Lancer coming through. Alright, we're gonna right skip, no need to do that. And I'm just gonna make this 20k column here. I'm gonna call down my PG, I think. I don't see a way that I can lose. Of course, heals could happen, but I'm pretty sure I'm safe. So I'm just gonna call this down and use Final Blaster Overlord's effect to Counter Blast 2 and retire this, and then retire this Blaster Dark. So, mutual exchange. Alright, but now we're just going to go face, so we're going to take out this, I'm going to go with the Curse Lancer first, to check for the last PG there, that he could have in hand, because two of them already went to the bottom of the deck, so now, ooh, it doesn't look like he has it, and even if he heals here, my Persona Blast will actually come in, so let's see, does he heal? Ah, he does not, that's going to be game. So yeah, that's the power of Shadows. They're strong, they're consistent, they draw you a lot of cards, it's just so much plus power, and just overall really strong. So shadows are really good. We got charged a lot for that rental, but it is what it is. Gotta show the boys what the deck is, but because of that expensive rental, we're only gonna be doing one game. So that was Shadow Paladin, so you guys can get ready. This deck will be coming out in English normally on June 1st. I don't think they're gonna bamboozle people with, with the release schedule any anymore. Pretty sure we're getting this with a story update next month. So this is what Shadow Paladin looks like. I hope you guys have good luck in pulling your new mains your PBOs, your Masquerades, your Curse Lancers, all that stuff. Some people might ask why we're not playing Maka. I personally like Maka a lot, but as you can see, because of the buff that Phantom Blaster Overlord has, you really want to dedicate a lot of Counter Blast to that play. So it's like, you're better off making strong columns with Masquerade, um, rather than having to, you know, commit too much with stuff like the Nemain, or I mean like with the Maka. You'd rather use the one Counter Blast for the Nemain, sometimes you might even use Blaster Dark, but usually you're using your counterblast for Nemain and Final Boss Overlord more or less exclusively, so you want to keep it for that. So hopefully that explains the reason why Maka is not being played here. So yeah, that's going to basically do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to become a channel member, f member, feel free to do so by clicking the join next to the subscribe button below. But of course that is fully optional. But on that note, that's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.